Hello, I'm Mike Edwards. I'm going to make a proposal today in this presentation regarding an alumni association for Snohomish High School that is creating one. Over the last couple of years, I've talked to many of you about your experiences connecting with your fellow alums in various events and engagements. The one thing that I've taken away from that as a common thread is the difficulty that you have reaching out to everybody. While there are many mechanisms and venues out there today to accomplish connecting with your alums, to let each other know about what's going on, there isn't one that actually reaches everybody. I'm going to talk about that a little bit today and then I'm going to make a proposal for how we can solve this problem of communication. And so the mission of this Alumni Association for Snohomish High School would be to promote and improve our connections with each other and our school. This is a common mission that you'll find at alumni associations across the land. They might also have a mission to create a scholarship, for example, or to improve the traditions, to preserve the traditions and history of the school and institution. But I feel both of those are really uh, at the bot at the uh, end of the day. They they are served by this simpler mission of promoting and improving our connections. And how that's accomplished is really up to us and those that lead our alumni association. The goals for this alumni association, first of all, are to be the only authorized representative, authorized by Snohomish High School administration and staff, authorized by the Snohomish School District administration and staff, and ultimately authorized by all of you. To the extent that you find the Alumni Association to be the most trusted source of information that you have about your fellow alums, about the activities and events that, that your alums are, are involved in and engaged in, to the extent that you all feel represented equally and without bias, you authorize the Alumni Association. And finally, a goal to endure. It's critically important that the Alumni Association is formed in a way that ensures it will endure. And that means not just be, being relevant to those of us from the 40s and the 50s and the 60s and the 70s, who I have spent the majority of my time speaking with over the past couple of years about the Alumni Association, but also those of you from the 80s and the 90s and the aughts and from 2014 and 15. How do we stay relevant to the young? That has to be figured out. And frankly, it isn't yet, but it will by embracing the young and figuring out what's important to them and how they communicate with each other. It will. I want to start with a search that I did recently for the Snohomish High School Alumni Association because lots of times when I spoke to people about forming an Snohomish High School Alumni Association, they their first statement was, well, what are you talking about? There, there already is a Snohomish High School Alumni Association. I've heard of it or I've seen it. <laughs> um, and so, you know, just do a web search for it. You'll find it. So I did. Uh, you know, if we look at it here, we'll see, we see at the top, SnohomishAlumni.com. Find Snohomish High School alumni from Snohomish, Washington. Class reunion information, photos, videos, discussion, announcements, school information. Sounds like an alumni association. Let's look at the next one. Alumni.class.com slash Snohomish. Welcome Snohomish High School alums. Sign up, create your Panthers alumni profile. Reconnect with your Snohomish High School classmates. And then we skip down to this one. Snohomish High School alumni.net. Reconnect with 208 members from Snohomish High School and Snohomish High School alumni.net. And then we skip down to here's one allhighschools.com. Find alumni in Snohomish, Washington. 
Well, there's four, and there's more below the fold. You're not seeing down below the page, and I'm going to show a couple of those here in a second. And then we have this one here at the bottom. Snohomish High School Alumni Information, shs.snow.webnet.edu. That is Snohomish High School. That is an official source. The rest of these are actually all for profit and for profit entities with a business model to uh, make money based on uh, the extent to which they provide value to those members who chose those alums who choose to become members. So let's look at that first one, the one at the top of the page, nohomishalumni.com. So I actually don't know a lot about this one. I haven't created the login and I haven't given them any money, but I look at the top uh, at this pane here, our newest alumni members here in the center toward the top. And I look, you know, it looks like there's Sue Coakley from 66, Kayla Chase, 90, Denny Schuler, 64. I know Denny. I gave him a call. I asked him about this and he wrote back to me. Mike, this is one of those emails I got months ago asking me if I wanted to join, and after I clicked on yes, they wanted money, and I stopped. I was only curious and wanted to see what they had to offer. I believe I told you about it. He did tell me about it. Uh, actually, what he was interested in was finding out uh, he, he's looking for names and addresses and contact information for alums because he'd like to make them aware of an annual golf tournament that he leads in August to promote and raise money for a scholarship for Coach Armstrong. It's a really awesome scholarship. I know about it because I'm a trustee at the Snowmich Education Foundation and we administer that scholarship. At any rate, Denny made the decision that he wasn't going to be able to achieve his goal and never gave them any money. It didn't appear to him that he would be able to get any, any um, names and addresses that it would serve that purpose to him. But I have no doubt that there are some Snohomish alums that are members of uh, SnohomishAlumni.com and presumably they're, they're, they're receiving some sort of value that they find wor worth worthwhile to them. Um, and there are probably some others who didn't like any who, did, who didn't, it didn't work for them. Here's Classmates.com. I'm a member of Classmates.com. I paid $36 for a two-year subscription. The reason I became a member of classmates.com was because it looked like I would be able to achieve my goal to reach out to lots and lots of alums to let them know about this forming alumni association. So I created a profile. Um, I joined the, the class of 1977. Might I consider myself um, uh, sort of on the side of the class of 1977. I graduated in 77, not from Snohomish High School. I put my... Um, I put that in there my profile, so I, I was having being honest about that. And I put information about why I think an alumni association would be interesting. Nobody contacted me. <laughs> I reached out to a ton of people, and I didn't receive a single response. I spent about two weeks sending messages. And uh, I'm not sure why, although I have, uh, I have some ideas, and I'll show you them right now. So if you look here, I have a, a listing of the class of 77. And it's showing here that there's 159. And what they've done, I believe, is they've gotten all the names of the class of 77 from the yearbook from the senior class in the 1977 yearbook. Now let's take a look down here. We see a name under the Bs, Marie Barnett. There's actually two listings for Marie Barnett two profiles. Um, we see this one here, which is the, I think that's the yearbook listing. And in the second profile, we see this one, which is the globe, that means location. I think those two are the default that um, they create for a profile that doesn't have an owner. A profile that doesn't have an owner is a profile where the actual person that it refers to, that it references, has not come to that profile and um, started making it their own. They may not even know that it exists. And it's interesting, they actually have two listings for Marie Barnett. She's actually Marie Norris. Barnett is her middle name. Marie, I apologize for, for um, 
picking on you, but I just did because you, you, there's, you have two listings here. So I think this, this first listing was created by classmates.com and the second listing is the one that you picked up and uh, made your own. And she's done, she has added here a photo. She's got a profile photo, perhaps some other photos that she added. This one here means she's created a story, this little text icon. Uh, so she's told a little bit about herself. This one here, this um, uh, little message box, that means that she has uh, um, messaged with other alums. And I don't remember if it was Marie or maybe it was a different one I looked at. And I saw that two people had contacted her and she had responded, but then they hadn't got, gotten back to her. But there is a mechanism on classmates.com where you can message with each other. You can send basically like Facebook messages, as far as I could tell. So on this page, we see evidence that some people have created profiles. So it looks like Keith Allen. 77 has actually picked up and owns his profile. It looks like so has Crystal Akins. Uh, it doesn't look like Chris Akins has. It looks like he's got the defaults there, location and uh, a yearbook reference. So we see here uh, banner ads from A Sweet Experience, Win Las Vegas. I am actually going to Las Vegas this evening. My wife is taking me to Las Vegas for my birthday. Today I'm 55 years old. So they saw me doing web searches for Vegas and lo and behold, here's a possibility that I might click through these and earn some money for classmates.com uh, as a result. You also see that they're selling um, uh, t-shirts and other Snowmash High School apparel. I'll come back to that in a minute. And then they're selling uh, yearbook reprints and they also sell digital copies. So you can click here and flip through it and look at the yearbook. Let's go take a look. So here is page 158 of the 1977 yearbook, and I've clicked, clicked on Kenny's name, and it's showing some, I guess, two references on this page uh, regarding Mr. Emil, and I cannot read them because the resolution isn't high enough. If you, if you uh, magnify this view, you can actually uh, read the, the small the text. Um, barely, it's kind of fuzzy, and the picture's a little fuzzy. This is a low-resolution image by design because they're selling this digital um, they're selling this digitally and they don't want to compromise their sales by putting up too high of a resolution image so they have a relatively medium I would say resolution image here um, it provides the value the, the it, it enables the the purpose of having this yearbook here which is to sell it but also to provide some community around it so um, they have an optical character recognition technology I'm, I'm, I, I'm a guessing, it's an educated guess here, and they have scanned all of the text and cross-referenced that with all of the names that they have and uh, tagged those names then to those pages. They also have a mechanism by which you can, um, you see it over here, likes and, likes and comments, so you can add annotations to these pages and call out whatever it is that strikes your fancy when you see that image or that page. And uh, when there's names that you put into that comment, then that can provide a link to the profile names that they know about. And those people can get messages that you have um, if they are owning their profile and come back and check their messages. So the other thing that they sell here is apparel. And you also saw it here on this Snohomish alumni page. They're selling Snohomish High School apparel. Now, when you click those, uh, I'll guarantee you, you don't go to this page. You don't go to the Snohomish High School DECA page where um, official Panther gear is sold and the profits from which go to the DECA club. Advisor Ben Doucette uh, makes sure that that money helps prepare emerging leaders and entrepreneurs in marketing, finance, hospitality, and management, which is the purpose of the DECA organization, Distributive Education clubs of America. So clearly a Snohomish High School Alumni Association that was associated with selling uh, gear would make sure those profits go locally to the DECA club. So you remember that I showed you that link on the bottom of that Bing search that had the official alumni information website on the Snohomish High School website. So this is that page. This is maintained by Kathy Weber, class of 74, who is also a, um, an alum and a district employee. 
and uh, she puts here information that class representatives sent her regarding their reunions, other things of note that she puts in here. So um, this is a great service to our alums. It would be really neat, I think, if this alumni information link actually included um, a link to an alumni association website. Uh, wouldn't that be neat? Uh, now we're now we're going to get to some pages that didn't show up in that Bing search, but they would show up if you knew what to search for. This is the Snohomish High School Alumni Facebook page. This was started, I think, by Debbie Ng, MG, Debbie MG, City of Snohomish employee and responsible for economic development. This page has 2,815 members as of Sunday when I took this screenshot. That's about 14% of current living alums, 2,815. I say that by making an educated guess that there are 20,000 living alums, and I base that off of uh, the Bothell High School alumni. I met recently with Beverly Schmier, who's one of the folks that operate the, that, that run the, 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 excuse me, the Alumni Association of Bothell High School, and they maintain a database of 20,000 Bothell High School alums. And it's, they do a lot of work to make sure that it's current and um, accurate, 20,000. So that's probably close to what we have at Snowmish High School. So 2,815 alums of, that, are, um, mem, um, that like this group, this alumni Facebook group. Um, well, here we see 2,814, so you can see it right there. So obviously this is providing a lot of value to those that are members of this. And I see a lot of people posting. It's posted at least once a day. Uh, we have the top post is pinned. So Debbie has pinned this uh, to make sure it doesn't scroll off. And then below that, we see all the recent posts. And I actually moved one up uh, that I liked from Georgette Johnson on here. Uh, she posted this awesome image of our drill team from 66. You'll never see that again. The drill team today at Snohomish is associated with the junior ROTC program. So those are the cadets with the rifles. You see them at ceremonies, doing flag ceremonies and such. Pretty awesome, but different. Things change, times change, and we move forward. So this is providing a lot of value, but obviously obviously, it's not reaching out to everybody. Uh, not everybody are um, on Facebook. There are quite a number of us that actually don't want to be on Facebook, and there's quite a number of us that just, you know, it's just not what we do. So the next page I'm going to show you is a page that's maintained on the Snohomish School District website. This is uh, under Departments, Contact Us, and then Communications, and then Media, and then uh, I just clicked Media, and this is the 2014 Media, and it goes back 2013, 12, 11, 10, 9. So this is the majority of all of the media postings on the web that uh, our director of communications for the school district tracks down and puts up here. And you'll see here, for example, FBLA students advanced to nationals, the third link from the top. It was an article in the Everett Herald on April 28th. And then you'll see Snohomish High School Cinderella Charming, an article in the Northwest Theater News posted on April 27th. I want to take a look at that. So this is a really interesting piece. It was written by critic Sherry Brookfield Jordan, and she took a whole bunch of photos and put them on here. Wrote a, a, a very complimentary piece about the Cinderella production. I hope many of you got to see it. Probably a lot of you didn't know about it, which is something that we would fix with an alumni association website. Uh, we know that uh, from this article that the Snowmish High School's Cinderella production was um, advised by a new drama advisor, Dana Opelt, and I've heard very complimentary things about her. And by the way, I went by the show, I went by the, uh, the, the Performing Arts Center at Snohomish High School last Friday, about four o'clock, and I was looking for, I was actually looking for band director Peter Wilson, and her, here the place was just, oh my gosh, it was just electric, getting ready for the performance, I poked my head into one of the rooms where the, uh, Cinderella was getting her, her makeup. And, uh, oh, they were so excited. It was just, it was just, you could feel it. It was really neat, really neat. I wanted to go badly. 
but I was engaged that night and also on Saturday night. And alas, I've missed the Cinderella performance as I will be gone this weekend too. But at any rate, uh, great article here. And, but you would have only known about it maybe if you were already a member of that site or if you knew about this media page. And then in Herald, they had this article and I've kind of cut out the middle of it because the piece about FBLA students advanced to national is at the very bottom there. So three high school um, students from Snohomish are going to attend nationals on behalf of FBLA. Congratulations to Bailey Green, Nicole Hill, and Shauna Kruger. I hope they do well. And then we have a tweet. Uh, the district communications, the director of communications for the district has a tweet, a Twitter account, and she tweets uh, multiple times per day. I don't know how many of you follow. Let's see, there's 242 followers, all right? And she's tweeted a thousand times since she created this account. Um, that first tweet, that most latest tweet here, if you click the link, City of Snohomish has notified the school district about the 15th Avenue D roundabout project. So you see here that um, on the Snohomish School District Facebook page, they have this link about the roundabout. I don't know if you all, all of you heard about this, but hopefully it's going to uh, improve tra traffic flow there at the top of Avenue D. So, you know, I, I, those alums that live in town, I don't know if they have other means to see this. I, I know there's been an article in the Tribune. Uh, but anyway, here you go. Uh, then. We also have, and she tweets about lots of other stuff, of course. If you are, uh, uh, if you tweet and follow, then you maybe find that of interest if you knew that it was there. This is the communications list server that the state maintains on behalf of school districts and schools across our state. There is a daily bulletin that's provided to Snohomish High School. I just uh, put here a copy of the uh, one from the fifth last week. It's actually really not daily. It's maybe a couple of times a week. Um, this is really more of interest probably to current parents and students of Gnomes High School. You know, stuff about the yearbook, you can sign up for the yearbook, etc. It does have the, the schedule, for, the sports schedule for the week posted here, which is interesting, obviously, to those of you that attend sporting events for Gnomes High School. It may not be broadly interesting to all alums in general, except for the schedule. And then we have the Arrowhead. How many of you remember the Snohomish High School Arrowhead? How many of you served on the Arrowhead staff? Well, it's still out there, and now they're on the web. And they post some, they write, uh, their staff writes interesting stories. These are of general interest in some cases. For example, obviously, if you were on the basketball team, boys or girls basketball team, then uh, you, you might find this interesting if you ever played. Uh, coached, assisted, boosted, whatever. Uh, so, you know, these stories are of interest if you know they're out there. We certainly would want to post them and link them and reference them from a website for this alumni association. So let's talk about that website. Certainly, we would want to highlight and link to existing stories and information that's already out there, such as what I was just showing you. Um, we would want to have an editorial staff that would uh, be maintaining relationships with the people and entities that post that stuff. Certainly, we'd have a very close relationship with the Director of Communications at Snowmore School District. And that would be of value to put that stuff all in one place so you wouldn't have to either, if you didn't know about it, or you wouldn't have to go trek all over the web to find stuff. Most people aren't going to do that. But if you could come to one place, that you could trust to do a good job of bubbling up the things that are of general are of general or unique interest to a loves, certainly that would be valuable to you. I think it might also be valuable, and I don't know if, if the Alumni Association leadership would want to do this, but um, it is confusing to have all of those websites out there purporting to be um, providing value to alums, and certainly they do, but what value do they provide? What's worth actually paying for? Uh, in general, we're finding this out through um, painful experience, shall I say. For example, I will not be renewing my membership with classmates.com. It didn't serve the purpose that I had hoped for, but they did get $36. And uh, was it worth $36? Mm, I don't think so. I wish I'd have purchased the membership that cost a lot less, but only gave you, I think there was a three month membership, but gosh, 
You know, I'm always seeking value. That 30, the, the two-year membership was uh, so much cheaper per month. Well, <laughs> live and learn, folks. Uh, now, we, I think that really a, a big part of the value, a big, big part of the value this website would provide is a vehicle to publish stories that you write. For example, that FBLA story on the Herald.net site, a little tiny piece. But don't you think that uh, one of the friends or parents or one of the boosters or the teachers or somebody, if they knew that they, if they put together the time to write something more interesting, more engaging, that they could actually publish it somewhere, maybe they would do that. Or maybe um, they would write, want to write about what happened at nationals. Somebody took some photos and, and something, you know, maybe somebody, you know, placed and, and you know, they can't, there's nearly no place to, for them to, to publish those sorts of stories to the, today that, that have broad reach. So I see part of the, the purpose of a website is to have a strong editorial staff that solicit and engage our community to write stories about what's happening at the high school stories about distinguished alums, stories about upcoming activities and events that would be of general interest and, and exciting for alums to hear about and read about and attend um, or to learn about after the fact and to remember what happened and see the stories, um, reunions, uh, all kinds of things. The things that are happening out there that we don't even know about yet in general because there isn't a place where we can learn about that that's ours. And absolutely, I guarantee you, Official gear that's sold through our website is going to be sold at the DECA store and it's going to benefit Snohomish High School students, not a for profit entity. Not to be dismissive of those for profit entities. I'm sure, obviously, there's great people working there, but I think that we would prefer our dollars to go and benefit locally. I know Ben, Set, ben Doucette, the advisor for DECA, would love that. And I've talked to him about providing. Uh, creating special sorts of gear for alums that uh, have our logo on it. Sir, of course, we're going to have a logo. Don't you want to have a logo? I want to have a logo. Uh, if I was a member of the class of 77, I'd want to have some gear that, that, that indicated I was from the class of 77 and showed that I was you know, wearing my colors and supporting our local DECA club. Absolutely. There would be um, a mechanism to receive donations. I believe personally that we do not want to charge a membership due, dues for uh, being a member of the Alumni Association. We're all members of the Alumni Association by virtue of having attended Snohomish High School. That's my personal opinion. The alumni leadership will uh, come to the proper conclusions on that. But just imagine with 20,000 alums, you know, what if just 5,000 of you thought once a year thought that it was worthwhile to give two dollars to maintain what this alumni association is doing that you find two dollars worth of value a year that's ten thousand dollars that could go a long ways to ma making a really valuable powerful website and alumni association providing other uh, services that i'll talk about in a second uh, local business sponsored ads do you think that um uh mr countryman and mr fulton and uh, Mrs. Kirkley would like to have an, uh, an ad on the website promoting their um, bed and breakfasts and their motel for alums that might be coming back to town to visit. I think that there are a lot of business owners in this town that have Panther Pride and would, would be very interested in some sort of sponsored ad arrangement. There's all kinds of ways that they could, that could work. Um, that's to be determined, but I have no doubt that the banner ads on our website aren't going to benefit Win Las Vegas unless Win Las Vegas is giving money back to our alumni association. And finally, there's a lot of you that have told me you want a newsletter. The Bothell High School Alumni Association has a really cool newsletter. Very well done. Um, those things are expensive to do. Um, their budget at Bothell High School Alumni Association is somewhere between three and $4,000 a year. They charge $20 annual membership fee for that, two newsletters a year. The way I see this happening is that the website would be used to determine what were the most popular stories in, of interest in the previous six months as, as measured by 
you know, how many of you read, uh, uh, clicked on it and uh, how much time you spent reading it and how much it was li linked from other places, etc. Um, so that can be used as a, a source of, of uh, input to what was published in the biannual, um, twice annual newsletter. But since it's expensive to send it out and print it, then those that wanted a newsletter, I think we would need to have cost recovery for that. So for example, if it costs us five or $10 a year, to do that, to mail that, then you would need to pay us a five or ten dollars a year to uh, cover that cost, so that um, those that chose to get the information for free from the website, hopefully with a donation here and there, um, you know, they wouldn't have to pay for those that wanted to get a printed, mailed newsletter. Uh, now let's talk about the tasks and roles that are associated with producing this website. The leadership of the alumni association, um, to begin with. Now, this isn't necessarily exactly how the tasks and responsibilities would need to line up with roles, but it's one way of doing it. We need a president, and if we have a president, we need a vice president. One of the most important things uh, regarding durability of any organization is strong leadership, and it starts with your president and always recruiting your next set of leaders. Always, you're always recruiting your next set of leaders. So in the case of a website, you might think of a president as an executive editor. Um, they're the person who are principally um, in charge of making sure that uh, appropriate web policy is defined and driven. They're ultimately the thought leader in that. Obviously, they're uh, referencing all of their staff and talking to many others about what's appropriate in terms of web policy. Certainly, the web policy has to fundamentally drive the mission. And um, there would also be a privacy policy that fundamentally drives that mission. For example, I would think at the very basis of a privacy policy for the website is that no information is ever given out to anybody requesting that information other than authorized representatives for their own class, perhaps. Um, obviously, that's to be determined, but um, I know from talking to lots of alums that they do not want their contact information given out for purposes that they don't agree with. And about the only purpose that everybody could agree with is that they want their contact information provided to their authorized representative. Anybody from the class of 61 wants their authorized representative to know their contact information. The person that puts on their reunion is the most obvious authorized representative for the class of 1961. But at any rate, enough about policy. So the editor, the editorial staff, that is the most important part of this alumni association that begins with a website. The website has to be active and uh, engaging and current. If something is only published on this website every week or every month, then you can expect that people aren't going to come back very often because they know that it's not very engaging. So the editorial staff is tasked with making sure that this website is new and engaging every day. So they have a primary role to engage with our community, to help people to create information that w will be published on our website that's unique and interesting to alums. That is their primary task, and they are good at it. They're good people. They're good with people. They are open and engaging to those people that will provide content. They're able to edit that content so it has a consistent voice and feel, um, and that so that writers feel supported in providing that content. So they know that they have strong editorial support to ensure that it's going to look and read and feel great. And we need a secretary. You know, that secretary is principally responsible for communicating with all of the authorized representatives, that is, all of those class leaders, those union reps, um, so that we can get information out to them when we need to, and they can get information up to us when they need to, so that we can publish it, post it, broadly broadcast it. Absolutely important that we have a treasurer. The treasurer is responsible for maintaining our books. Um, if we choose to have 5013C status, or when we do, 
they would uh, take the lead to make that application, make sure the 990s are, are um, created. Now, the treasurer themselves, they may not be that bookkeeper. Probably a bookkeeper is going to be hired, be a few hundred dollars a year. There's also some associated legal services that would be needed. Occasionally, we need some legal support. Hopefully, we have some alums out there that have that sort of expertise that would be willing to offer it up to the, to the association on occasion when it's needed. And a web administrator who will just drive and design the website process of creating that website, what's it look like, engaging the, the people that need to be associated with creating that, all the use scenarios that we need, certainly the editorial staff. Uh, and that person would be responsible for building and maintaining the website. The mass, vast majority of that effort being up front to create it, minimal amount of effort to maintain it. I have some skills there. I'd be willing to work on that piece if I could um, get maybe one or two others to help with it. And obviously we need to fill the rest of these roles. And finally, stretch goals. All people, all entities must have stretch goals. The things, you know, I see the website as the base. You know, that's that we, that's the, the first thing that we're going to achieve. And that will enable, that will provide a foundation to build upon. What kinds of stretch goals am I talking about? Well, certainly we need to improve the website. There need to be feature areas on that website. What if we were to put out on the website a call to action? We're looking for people who want to create an archive or let me say um, a feature area at our website about our Hall of Fame. How many of you know we have a Hall of Fame? There are many inductees in that Hall of Fame. Stories need to be written about those inductees. Our most distinguished alums and friends of the high school. There need to be stories written about those individuals and they need to be on our website. Interviews of those individuals, maybe videos, audio histories, oral histories, photos of all of the memorabilia, information about that memorabilia. There's a lot of really awesome stuff down there at the Keith Gilbertson uh, Sports and Fitness Center where it's, ar where it's archived, where it's on the walls and the trophy cases. It's just, it's a tragedy that there isn't more no well known about that. How does the alumni, how do the Hall of Fame, who, who's on the, um, who are the individuals who choose those inductees? How do they go about choosing that? When are they gonna do so next? Are this, it's just, there's something there. All of our sports clubs have websites and booster clubs and they love the attention. They love people to know what's going on there. Wouldn't it be neat if we had coverage on our website, uh, a feature area on our website about all of the sports clubs? And, and we had a very engaging relationship with those people to help, to help uh, them and them to help us. I think that it would also be really neat. A next step would be to have, um, be able to support preferences. You know, we went and looked at a bunch of stuff that maybe only some people care about. How many people care, care about FBLA? Certainly all past FBLA students would care about that, but would all everybody care about it? No. Would everybody care about football? No. Would everybody care about drama? No. Would some? Absolutely. So wouldn't it be neat if you were able to indicate your preferences so that when you came to the website, we bubbled up the stuff that you'd already said you care about. And it, you took the time to indicate preferences to us. Maybe you'd like to let us push information to you. Push subscriptions. You could subscribe for stuff. You could say, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, anytime there's anything about drama, I definitely want to be tweeted about that or Facebook messaged or emailed or texted or whatever social media evolves that allows us to, to push information out to you that you've told us that you want to get. Hopefully, we're going to have some alumni association activities and events, homecomings, reunions. Whatever you have the passion to create, we and the alumni association will help you promote. I also see all kinds of services out there that we can provide. When passionate people step up to provide them and bring people along with them to do it. For example, wouldn't it be awesome if alums out there who have professional experience and passion around certain areas could mentor current students or recent graduates, <coughs> excuse me, or other alums that want to learn, that 
that have a dream to do what you've done and need help, need encouragement, you can provide it. There are so many services that we can provide. All it needs is a venue to make it well known, an alumni association, and those with the passion and the drive to make things happen. And the encouragement to know that they will be, be able to be more successful in that because there's this alumni association that has uh, the mechanism and the means by which all alums can be aware of it. And finally, as I spoke about at the beginning of this talk, relevance to our youngest alums. I only know one class year, 2002, who has a person that's interested in this. I know there's others. The problem is that the youngest people, they haven't, in general, most of them, become old enough to start appreciating, appreciating the value of connecting, but they are connecting. They do appreciate that. We just don't necessarily know how they're doing it because, well, I'm, like I said at the beginning of this talk, I'm 55 years old. I don't know what kinds of social media and means that the younger people are using. We have to be relevant to our youngest alums. If we're not, our days are limited as an alumni association. So that is certainly perhaps the most important stretch goal of them all. I hope you found this interesting. My name is Mike Edwards. My number is 206-940-5552. My email address is michael at snowed.org. Michael at snowed.org, S-N-O-E-D dot O-R-G. Please give me a ring, send me an email, let's talk.